So how do you bring down these very high levels of blood sugar in the morning? Reduce the carbohydrates in your evening meal. Less of the yam, pasta, rice, and more protein, more meat, fish, um, eggs. You know, you can eat eggs anytime. Above ground, particularly leafy green vegetables. Then I usually recommend that you don't eat after 6 p.m., right? You have your supper, dinner, whatever you want to call it, before 6 in the evening. In an ideal world, this would work, you know, for a lot of people. But being human beings, food has a special place in our hearts because eating is a social thing, you know. You might want to eat with your family. You won't eat alone before six and then sit and watch your family eating their food without joining them. So that might not be convenient for you. For some of us, food is like a sedative. It's a stress reliever, makes you feel good, you know. If you eat at before six, then you're sitting twiddling your thumbs for hours before you go to sleep. For the most part, trying not to think about food. <laughs> For a lot of people, that's what happens. So you're sitting thinking about how not to eat. And the chances are that you'll have a snack. And the chances are, again, that that snack you're going to have is not something that's going to be blood sugar friendly. So if you're in that situation where you're likely to snack on something that's not going to be good for your blood sugar or you're thinking about food a lot then you might be better off just shifting that meal not having it before six but having it maybe around eight eight thirty just making sure that it's not too close to when you go to sleep because that can affect your sleep and then again do 20 to 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise after you eat what this does is that it encourages your muscles to take the glucose out of your blood so that that food that you've eaten starts getting used up so that when you go to sleep, hopefully it will reduce your baseline blood sugar levels that you go to bed with. If you don't exercise, then the food goes into your system, the sugar goes into your blood and you're not using it. It will be stored as fat, so it will be lingering in your blood. And then when you start off with a high baseline blood sugar at night, when you now have the dawn phenomenon in the morning, you're up here and then the dawn phenomenon adds to it and then you end up up here in the morning. But if you have a lower baseline and then you experience a dawn phenomenon, instead of being up here, you'll be somewhere down here. So it lowers that baseline blood sugar at night. Some people feel that um, that exercise is going to empty the liver of glycogen because Part of what contributes to that dawn phenomenon, that high blood sugar in the morning, is uh, the liver releasing glucose into the blood by breaking down glycogen. So some people feel, okay, if you exercise, then it will, it will you know, exhaust the glycogen in the liver. No, your liver is very, very intelligent. Those are emergency supplies. The first thing it does is once they're going down, it replenishes them, right? The glycogen is there to save your life. So that glycogen is not going to be depleted by 20 minutes or, or 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise. And exercise, we're talking nothing complicated. You can just walk. That is just the simplest, easiest thing to do. If you can't walk outdoors and walk on the spot, there's somebody, um, I think Leslie Sanson, that's developed a whole ecosystem of walking DVDs. That's, that's just what she does. DVDs on walking. So you can walk. And what you need to do is to be slightly out of breath. You should be able to talk, hold the conversation, but you should be slightly breathless. You do that for 20, 30 minutes after eating. You can try some apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in a glass of water with your evening meal. Then the same thing before you go to sleep. And then the same thing in the morning. What this does is that it increases your body's sensitivity, particularly your muscles, their sensitivity to the insulin that's already in your system so that that makes them more efficient at um, heeding insulin's call, would I say, and uh, taking that blood sugar out of the blood in the presence of insulin. Another thing you can try, and this isn't going to prevent the dawn phenomenon, but when it's already occurred, this can help. And that would be to take your medication earlier in the morning so that when you're having that um, high peak, then you'll be taking your medicine so that it can help to bring it down. Some people say eat breakfast. Some people say skip breakfast. The aim of eating breakfast is that um, the theory is that it's supposed to promote the release of insulin so that you eat and insulin is released. And this will now tackle the dawn phenomenon, and, you know, help to bring down that sugar. But one problem is that 
you already have a whole load of sugar in your system. When you eat, you're adding more sugar to your system so that the insulin that is secreted is battling the sugar that's already there and battling the sugar that's coming in as well. So one way to counteract this is to not eat a sweet breakfast. No, no yams and rice and, and cereal and toast and all that kind of stuff. Eat a savory breakfast. That would be things like eggs and, you know, tomatoes, veggies, peppers, fish, sardines, unsweetened yogurt, Greek yogurt, that kind of thing. So that will have less impact on your blood sugar so that the insulin that is released can then work on the sugar that's already in your system from the dawn phenomenon. And then if you skip breakfast, then you wouldn't have anything coming into your system at all so that your body can concentrate on trying to lower the blood sugar that's um, arisen because of the dawn phenomenon. But the problem there is that there are some drugs that you just have to take with food. I challenge you to try taking, no, don't take me up on that. <laughs> try taking your metformin without eating. That is a disaster. So in that kind of situation, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't advise that you skip breakfast because you need food to take that metformin. Um, some other drugs may not have those kinds of issues, but in particular, metformin is a problem. So in that case, you're better off eating breakfast, but make sure that, like I said, it's a, more of a savory rather than a sweet breakfast with all those things that I mentioned. I have a video about metformin and side effects that I'll link up there or down in the description so that you can have a look after you finish watching this video. And once again, exercise to the rescue. Um, you can do some exercise, moderate activity while that blood sugar is high in the morning. So that will help your muscles to use up some of that excess sugar that's floating around in your blood and it will help your blood sugar to come down. I like to do power yoga. That way I get some exertion. But, you know, that flowing stuff, you know, kind of helps me calm down. I find it very soothing. Uh, also, I walk about 30, 40 minutes and I listen to podcasts while I do that. So that's like a double use of my time. And I find that relaxing as well. So by doing something that exerts you and gets your muscles to use up the sugar that's in your blood and then also calms you down. That's your, it's like a twofer, you know, two for one. <laughs> so that you're getting that activity and you're getting that um, reduction in your stress levels as um, stress hormones, cortisol, uh, the epinephrine, no epinephrine rather, the flight or fight hormone. So it calms you down. And those two hormones there, they antagonize insulin. So that means that as insulin is trying to get your blood sugar to come down, those two hormones are trying to get your blood sugar to come up. So by minimizing them, then you're also helping insulin to work better and that will help your blood sugar to come down. One thing that I hardly hear anyone talking about when it comes to the dawn phenomenon is sleep. And sleep is so important for almost everything. Mental health, physical health, the works. Here again in the dawn phenomenon, sleep is so, so important. There's a hormone, a chemical messenger that's produced in your brain called growth hormone. And this hormone is important not just for growth, like, you know, in babies and children and teenagers, but in adults as well, because it's used for regeneration and repair and restoration. And the problem with growth hormone when it comes to sugar regulation is that it antagonizes the effects of insulin. So it works against insulin. That means that in the presence of growth, growth hormone, rather, you will have higher blood sugar levels. And studies have shown that if you block the effects of growth hormone at night, then you don't get the dawn phenomenon in the morning. And you might be saying, yay, that means that all we have to do to stop the dawn phenomenon is to block our nightly release of growth hormone. You need growth hormone. You need that spike. Because like I said, it's needed for regeneration and repair. Now, when you don't get proper sleep, you don't get enough or it's disturbed, it's not good quality, the growth hormone release is prolonged. So instead of having a no one and done, it goes up, spikes and then comes down. It goes up and it stays up. It might come down, but then it goes up again. So the period of time during the night where you have growth hormone being released is extended. It's increased. So that means that you're promoting that insulin resistance, that higher blood sugar for a longer period of time. And then this spills over into the morning. What you can do is get a good night's sleep. I have people who message me at two o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I see messages timed 1.30, 1.45, 2. That means that a lot of people are still awake at that time. So if you can get to bed 
around 11. I know it's hard. I know. But it's like a muscle. Once you have it in your mind, you decide that you're going to do it. Then you find ways. Your mind starts working on it. You find ways to make it happen. If you get sleep before 11, then you will have a chance to get into that really deep sleep. And then you will have a chance for your growth hormone to be released when it's supposed to around 1, 2 a.m. And then it will go up peak the way it should and then come down to where it's supposed to be and then very minimal levels of secretion will be maintained through the night. Now this is part of the reason why shift workers, people who drive at night, doctors and nurses, uh, you know people who don't get enough sleep have a higher incidence, a higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure and other metabolic disturbances. And if you want some more simple ways to bring down your blood sugar, watch this next video.